Hi, I'm Alex and today we're going to create an ETL process using Apache Cassandra and PySpark. Let's go! Today we're going to take a look at Datastack Spark Cassandra connector. This library lets you expose Cassandra tables as Spark data frames and write Spark data frames to Cassandra tables also execute arbitrary SQL queries in your Spark applications. The library has a great functionality and also supports the Python API. Obviously, we need a dataset for our experiment. That's why I'm creating a new Python script using PyCharm. The script will produce a random CSV dataset for a Spark application. First things first, we need to import CSV, random faker and daytime packages to the project. Our CSV includes seven columns that illustrate uh, customer information. I created a generate CSV method which generates a randomized CSV using the given columns. It's drop that simple. Mind you, I use the faker library for generating random names. Let's remove the previous file and find out how it works. I increase the row quantity to 100k rows and execute the script. It will take some time to complete. Great, let's look at the file. Seems pretty good, now we have a taste dataset. We will use Jupyter Notebook and PySpark. So we need to start our training notebook. Let's open the terminal and proceed to the project folder and then run Jupyter Notebook. Web UI will start in a new window almost immediately. At the next step, don't forget to copy the taste CSV file to the notebook folder. Let's take a step back to the database. We need a Cassandra instance to test our ETL application. I prefer to use Docker containers and in this case I use an official Datastax Cassandra Docker image and Docker desktop for Mac OS. Let's run the Cassandra container and check whether it works correctly. The instance will run at localhost with the port number 9042. Now let's connect to the Cassandra. I'm using dbeaver. Any table in Cassandra should belong to some key space. So let's create a one named client. Now we are able to create a table that will store our data extracted from CSV dataset. I will call it info. The table consists of the columns that we have already seen at CSV. Cassandra allows us to add a comment to the table. At the next step, I do a fine-tuning altering the table with the custom compression settings just for fun. Great, our database schema is ready now. Let's get our hands dirty with ETL application. Open your Jupyter and create a new notebook using IPy kernel. Let's name it Spark Cassandra Test CSV. As the first step, we should import all needed dependencies and setups. I will use find Spark utility to initialize PySpark environment. Let's import Spark session and create new Spark context. Take a closer look to the parameters. Spark.jars.packages with a given artifact will download all needed dependencies from the Maven repository. We're also set Cassandra connection credentials and extensions here. Let's run the paragraph. As you see, there are connected jars are downloading from Maven. And now we are ready to read our CSV to the Spark data frame. Since our CSV has a header, I set the related option to true and also provide a path to the CSV. Let's see the data frame schema.
Looks good. Well, now check the data frame contents. Here our clients are. If you've noticed, there are some differences in columns naming between data frame and Cassandra table. Let's fix it. We will rename data frame columns and also add a custom ETL timestamp column. First of all, we need to import call and current timestamp functions from PySpark.SQL. Then we create aliases for each column of the data frame. We we'll also create a new column named ETL timestamp. Let's look at the contents. All columns now in lowercase and ETL timestamp column stores a current date time. We are ready to store the dataset to Cassandra. Set the right format to Cassandra. Set the mode to append. In a nutshell, that means an absurd. Existing columns will be updated, otherwise created. Select our table and key space. Let's run the paragraph. Since there are quite a lot of rows in our CSV, the process will take some time. Finally, it's finished. Let's look at Cassandra table. I will count rows in client.info table. Well, there are 100k rows. Brilliant. I will try to select a client with a random ID. Let's see. Here he is, Mr. Jillian White. I guess that's enough for today. Great job!